One of my favorite streaming series from 2022 was Netflix's Wednesday, which is so popular and so beloved, and I think for good reason. She's stubborn, she's flawed, but she's also very lovable, and the show itself does include a lot of obvious and also a little bit more like stealthily planted references to Edgar Allan Poe. You have the school itself that Wednesday attends, Nevermore Academy being a poem reference of his, you have the Poe Cup. You have like a little dormitory houses being named after Poe's works as well. So it's really like embedded closely within the story. And it's really cool if you are well versed in his work to be able to pick up on those things. He is seen as like the OG horror writer, gothic writer. And for somebody like myself who really fashions himself a, a lover of the horror genre, I think it is the perfect opportunity with the popularity and release of Wednesday to go into his work and see if it's something that really vibes with me and my personal tastes at this point in my life. I feel like with classic works like Edgar Allan Poe, it is going to be either hit or miss for me. I'm somebody that can get a little bit bored or find the, the, the diction or the prose to be like very tedious in classic works that are like more on the older side of like the 19th century, for example. So we'll see. Is it something I could gravitate towards? Is this stuff as timeless as people say his stuff is? Like the good Nevermore student that I am, I actually did dive into some research about the life of Edgar Allan Poe. Edgar Allan Poe is born in 1809 and he dies in 1849. To put that in perspective, his birth year is the last year of Thomas Jefferson's presidency, and the year that he dies is gonna be about like 14 or 15 years before slavery in the United States is abolished for people of African ancestry. Something wild about him that I learned that I did not know before I did some preliminary research is that he actually married his first cousin. Not only that, at the time of their marriage, she was 13 and he 27. Not only was his life very interesting, but so was his death. It's a very mysterious circumstance that a lot of people like to weigh in their own theories. It's something that historians love to write about. His death was very abrupt, and you have a lot of people who have a wide range of theories, some of which are as straightforward as like alcohol poisoning, and some are a little bit more complicated and wild with him being like murdered or kidnapped and like accidental poisoning by alcohol. So the jury is still out on that, but I think it just really adds to his life and his work and his legacy when his death is so mired in intrigue. Today, I wanna to start off my Poe journey getting cozy by reading some of his short stories while I listen to some audio recordings of the same kind of text. And then I wanted to watch The Pale Blue Eye this evening. I think it's a film that really is better experienced in the evening time from what I've seen, just like the dark vibes and like the atmosphere. So I'll check in with you all once I've gotten through that. I wanted to check in. I did read two short stories from my big ass Poe book right here. Um, I read The Black Cat and The Telltale Heart. I chose those short stories to start off with because I feel like they're some of the most iconic. I think the only other one that I've heard of that's super popular and well known is The Fall of the House of Usher, which I do plan on um, reading today. I did really like those short stories. I thought that The Black Cat was way more straightforward and easier to understand what was happening than the Telltale Heart. I don't know what Edgar Allan Poe has against cats. Like that is a very intense short story. It was the first one I read. So that was interesting. Um, and I thought that the Black Cat and the Telltale Heart were great pairings because they both kind of end in similar ways. Yesterday, I also got to watching The Pale Blue Eye, which I definitely loved. That film is really cool because it's so unassuming. Like you don't know how things are gonna turn out or like you think you know, 
but then the carpet gets pulled right from underneath you. So I think that film is something that you have to watch a second time to pick up everything it was kind of dropping for you in terms of clues about how things were gonna end. That twist in the last 10 minutes really got me. I did not see that one coming. I had never seen the actor who plays Dudley Dursley in another role. He looks so different and he really embodied that like fictional depiction of Poe. And he had just like a really sweet, kind, weird, like charismatic personality. And I thought that was really cool to see Poe characterized in this way, because it really does contrast with the Poe I have in my head is like this alcoholic recluse who is super like dark and macabre. I can't talk about this film and not mention the gorgeous color palette and like the dark academia, like rustic, early 19th century color palette. Gillian Anderson's character was hilarious. Like such a small role in the film, but she really is a scene stealer. It's a little bit like slow moving. It's a movie I feel like you really have to be patient with because the pacing is a little bit more like on the slower side. So I guess I didn't realize that going in, but I think the last 10 minutes definitely make up for that. Now that I think about it, I feel like you as the audience, as the watcher, are a part of like your own mystery hunt and you're like kind of a detective yourself and you don't realize it to the end that like the director, the screenwriters, whoever have been like dropping you clues and hints to like ultimately what the story ends up actually being about and who actually ends up being the perpetrator of these crimes. The Pale Blue Eye also features a really great like graveyard setting. There's a point in the film where Poe and his love interest take like a romantic stroll through a graveyard. I'm like, oh, the height of romance in my cold, dark black heart. I loved it so much. So I thought that that was very Poe-like, very Wednesday Adams. So I wanted to wrap up some of my short stories while hanging out at a cemetery. I do have some folks to visit. I like to go and visit some family members who've passed and spend some time just like hanging out with them, um, you know, maybe even like picnicking, all that. So I thought that was really timely because I haven't done that in a minute. It also will kind of get me into the Poe vibe as well. I also have an unboxing that I really have been sitting on for like a week now and I cannot wait to share it with you all. So I'll update you with all of that. back from the cemetery feeling very like relaxed and calm. I'm somebody that does a lot of like spiritual and I guess self-care practices 
that revolve around death and kind of trying to cultivate a more death positive mindset and just a healthier balanced relationship to death. And I think that Edgar Allan Poe really writes about death in very interesting and intriguing ways. I read Morella, The Fall of the House of Usher, and The Premature Burial. So before I started reading these stories this weekend, I had very little to no information on Edgar Allan Poe, who he was, um, his stories, anything like that. I just kind of knew he was a writer of like really dark and like death related stories and narratives and plots. After reading a handful of his stories, I am obsessed. Like I really love his stuff. I think his writing for me can be a little bit confusing because of like what I like to say in a very eloquent way, his old timey prose. I think The Fall of the House of Usher was one of the stories that was really challenging for me to understand. And also Morella was a little confusing. So when in doubt, I just kind of looked up the plot summaries. I found it super enjoyable to listen to people read, like so many people on Spotify and YouTube are reading the stories. And it was really lovely to hear them tell the story to you while you also have the book in front of you. Always, like I just noticed a theme, they always touch on death. They touch on like anxieties around death. And in particular, I really think my favorite from this weekend of Edgar Allan Poe's works has to be The Premature Burial. For a second, as I was like reading the first few pages, I was like, okay, is this like nonfiction? And then I realized, okay, there's a speaker. They are researching the medical world. They're thinking about like bodies and death. One big reason why I gravitated towards reading the premature burial short story is the prior knowledge I had about American anxieties surrounding death in like the early 19th century. You had people who were like really afraid that they were going to be buried or bury a loved one before they actually die. And so you see the creation of inventions that are supposed to like help aid somebody who just so happens to have found themselves buried underground in a crypt, in a coffin. And it's like things like um, having a bell that you then have the ability to, if you wake up in a coffin, to ring and then it'll alarm somebody above ground that you are still alive. So I found that short story to be very entertaining because Poe touches on all of that. So the history lover in me was like, oh, that's like really cool to see somebody in that time period talk about all these things. But in a more like death positive lens, I found the story to be really illuminating in terms of like the ending of it. I thought it was really powerful and unexpectedly beautiful and graceful in the main thesis. I think the speaker or maybe even Poe was trying to articulate this idea that like we as humans can get so wrapped up in our fears and anxieties surrounding death that we forget to live and that there are times when you need to be thinking about death, but if it is so overwhelming for you, it is then unproductive as like a thought exercise. So I just, there's just so many beautiful lines in the end of that short story. I really wanted to get to the fall of the house of Usher this weekend because I have been wanting to read What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher for quite some time, but I think you probably should read the story that it's like based off of since it retells the short story. I found it to be interesting, but like, mm, I didn't find it to be the most captivating story I read this weekend from Poe. I wouldn't say I disliked The Fall of the House of Usher. I just felt like it was a little too vague because you don't really know why the speaker, the person that you're experiencing the story through, like why they're even there. Um, and I just felt like it would be a story better told, I think, visually. And I think for me, somebody who's not really competent in that kind of early 19th century prose and the way that they write, that writing style, I think a lot of stuff went over my head. But once I read through a summary of the short story, that was really helpful. And it was interesting to see how the health of the family, the Usher family, was paralleling the health of the physical house structure. So I think there is a lot I'm intrigued about when it comes to reading What Moves the Dead, because I think if it's like using that, but like maybe writing in a way that's a little bit more accessible for me, I might find the story to be a little bit more enthralling. Reflecting back on my exposure to Edgar Allan Poe and his works this past weekend, it makes a lot of sense to me why the TV show Wednesday uses him and references him so much as a part of that show. Because I think just like Wednesday, Poe really did embrace the darker sides of life he was not necessarily afraid of it, but I think if you look at the themes 
and his characters within his stories, even just the small amount that I read. I think he used writing as a way to kind of like process his anxieties. And as much as Wednesday is so fearless in how she embraces death and the macabre, I think she also has a fear around it as well, but I think it's just so natural and so human and something innately in all of us that as much as we are fascinated by darkness, we also tremble in the enormous weight of it all. So I, I found Wednesday and Poe to be such like kindred spirits. So huge shout out to the Wednesday series for putting Poe on my radar. I cannot stop getting my Poe on. I'm gonna make it a new year resolution to really focus on getting through that book and exploring more Poe. I would love if you had any short stories that you absolutely love or you think that a beginner would definitely find accessible, please leave those titles down below. I also am interested in exploring any of his um, poems as well. So please definitely leave those recommendations. Thank you so much for being on this journey with me and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.